Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to talk about the enhanced risks to nuclear power plants from abrupt climate change. So, as you know, if you followed my videos, we're getting huge warming in the Arctic because the Arctic is a darker place. It's absorbing more solar radiation. So we're losing sea ice and snow cover at exponential rates. So the temperatures in the Arctic are greatly increasing. That decreases the temperature difference to the equator, which causes the jet streams to slow down and become wavier and stuck in place. So we're getting extreme weather events. We're getting torrential rains leading to flooding. We're getting droughts in other places. Now, nuclear power plants are operating around the world. They need cooling water for the most part. Most reactor designs need some sort of cooling water. So the water comes in from a river or the ocean, cools the reactor and leaves, uh, you know, heated up. So when there's a drought, for example, in southwest U.S., the reactors that are along rivers um, have to throttle down or even shut down on occasion during heat waves because the water level is too low on the rivers, so the water is warmer, heated up by the heat wave, so it's too warm to cool the reactor. Reactors on coastlines are susceptible to um, risks like tsunamis, for example, as we saw with Fukushima, or with storm surges and hurricanes. As we, so that was one of the biggest concerns in, in the fall of 2017 when we had all these hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin coming up through the Caribbean, uh, wreaking havoc on Caribbean islands and hitting Florida and Texas and all these different places. There's lots of nuclear power plants that are on coastlines in these regions. And a hit, a direct hit from a hurricane is going to possibly wreak havoc. So what is the risk if, if that type of thing is to happen? So the risk is the probability of something occurring multiplied by the significance or consequences if that thing happens. So with extreme weather events and weather whiplashing increasing around the world from abrupt climate change, the probability of reactors being hit in various locations is increasing. What are the consequences if a reactor is hit? Well, we can only base that on accidents that have occurred in the past. So in this video, I'll be focusing mostly on uh, Chernobyl because it happened, we're almost at the anniversary, the 32 year anniversary of Chernobyl. It happened April 26, 1986. So looking at when, when you have a reactor accident with radiation leak, this is a long term story. You have immediate effects, but you also have the effects of the radiation in the environment on mortality rates and the radiation gets spread all over. It was spread in the atmosphere, in the wind uh, currents, and you had clouds of radiation moving over different parts of Europe. In fact, even clouds of radiation moving around the globe. So basically, you know, parts of the northern hemisphere were irradiated from the Chernobyl accident. So I'm going to talk about some of the details of that. So what triggered this off is I was going through my emails um, and there was an email from several months ago by Gary and he was talking about this article on Chernobyl, Chernobyl consequences of the catastrophe for people and the environment. So he talked about how it's affecting everything, plants, animals, soils, water, the atmosphere, microbes, everything is changed. So this book is, uh, there's 500 case studies. There's a bunch of videos that were attached. So he sent me this email and I hadn't read this book. So um, this was after the hurricanes were hitting the East Coast. 
says there's 13 reactors on the Atlantic coast of the U.S. They'll be inundated if nothing is done. The two reactor locations in Florida had a close call from the hurricane that went up. So this is the, the, the emphasis for this video, to look at the risk. If a nuclear reactor is hit and leaks radiation, you know, what, is, what are going to be the long-term effects on a place like Florida? I mean, we know it's going to be catastrophic, but how catastrophic? Okay, so this email with these attachments kind of triggered the article. So there's a number of, there's a couple of YouTube videos I'd like to recommend. Um, this one here, Chernobyl, a million casualties. Okay, it's a, the, how many people were actually killed in, from Chernobyl? A million according to this and according to the book. And I'll talk about that. This is um, Professor Yablokov. Um, and he was talking with another professor on estimates of Fukushima victims. So this was a video from, this happened, this video was just after um, Fukushima had occurred. Um, this particular video was six days, filmed six days before Fukushima occurred. And then there's a video that's a bit more recent you know, lessons from Chernobyl at a talk that was given by um, this uh, Dr. Alexei Yablokov. Okay, so basically, just to show you where Chernobyl is, um, if I go to Google Earth and I put in Chernobyl and then just do a search for it, then the GIS application Google Earth, it takes you right to where the reactor site is. So this is the, this is the reactor site here, and you're probably familiar, you can click on these different things to get images and things like that. Um, I don't know why they're not, uh, my point, pointers, Chernobyl, NPP reactor, different locations. So I'll zoom out a little bit. So here's where we are. Okay, in, uh, so here, in, 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 so this is Belarus here, this is in the Ukraine here, it's, it's right near the border. Okay, so when the accident occurred, the, the radiation spread here, and it also went over to Russia because of the prevailing winds. Okay, so let me come to the, the article that was written or the book that was written basically in 2009. So this is showing pine trees near Chernobyl. So this is 1986, okay? The tree was growing here up to 1986. Chernobyl happened, the tree continued to grow, but of course the wood, the density and the color and everything is quite different. So this book, and you can just Google this and get it online, it's called Chernobyl, Consequences of the Catastrophe for People and the environment. So this is the this is one of the best um, books that I've written, but that I've written that I've read about about certainly the best book I've read about Chernobyl. Um, but it also is the best in terms of how how does radiation from an accident affect the environment? How does it affect the plants and the animals? How does it how does it change the DNA? Once the accident happens, you can never go back to where you were before. Okay, the life in that region is changed, the DNA is changed, the microbes in the soil are changed, and you can never go back to where you were before. So let's have a look at what happened here. So this is a, a very detailed book, 350 pages, odd pages. So let me go down. Okay, so it's by Yavlikov. Nestorenko, Vasily, and Alexei Nestorenko. And it's in the, the annals of the New York Academy of Sciences. And it was, so this, the, the picture was pine trees, changes in wood color density and growth rate following radiation from Chernobyl. Okay, the image, and you can go through. And like I say, I highly recommend that you look online and you can see this find this article, so it was published in 2009, okay, um, 
and we'll just have a look at some of the things that are in here briefly. So it talks about the the accident. Okay, it talks about the, the amount of radiation released in Chernobyl is about a hundred times that released from the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So a hundred times more radiation impacting the environment than than those uh, than than the nuclear weapons. So it talks about health consequences short and long term, the change in morbidity, change in mortality rates, the impairments and disabilities, accelerated aging. When you have radiation, ionizing radiation from a nuclear reactor, it changes the cells in the body and it effectively accelerates the aging process of humans. Life expectancy in the region near the Chernobyl accident went from 75 years old to 65 years old after the accident. Um, when, you, when, when, doctors measure, uh, um, when doctors examined people that had been exposed to high levels of radiation, um, if they didn't get the cancers and, or higher blood pressure or other diseases, their, their bodies effective biologically aged significantly faster as a result of the accident. Um, talks about non-malignant diseases, non-cancerous, cancerous diseases, mortality afterwards. Then it talks about the environment, the atmosphere, water, soil contamination, the impact on, on flora, plants, on fauna, animals, all the animals in the region, and on the microbes, the microbial biota, contamination of the food and people. I mean, this, this was 32 years ago and people are still dying as a result of this. The, nucle the radionuclides nuclides, uh, nucleides that came out, um, what you can do in terms of food and things like that in order to try to minimize the radioactive effects and the overall consequences. So I want to go to, I want to go to, uh, hey, let's have a look. Uh, 201. I want to go to, I think it's 201, page 201, which is 200. Here we go. Okay, so, no, it's not there. Um, which page is it? 204, where are we? Okay, um, hmm, 201, Russia, mortality afterwards, maybe it's 210, 204, can't find the page, there, general mortality, Here we go, okay. This is what I was looking for, sorry. What is the total number of Chernobyl victims? So if we have a hurricane taking out a reactor in Florida, for example, and we get a large spill of radiation, you know, what is the impact on people? How many people do we expect will die over the next uh, 30, 40 years from Fukushima? How many people are, you know, died from Chernobyl and are continuing to die? So. The World Health Organization calculated a total number of 9,000 cancer deaths in Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia attributed to the Chernobyl catastrophe for a period of 90 years after the meltdown. Okay, now, they, the problem is, is they use averages of average dosage rates, aver the average human, the average... Um, uh, the average uh, resistance of the body or susceptibility of the body to radiation, things like that. And we know that averages don't kill people. Average weather doesn't kill people. It's always the extreme event. So this is populations living in highly contaminated territories, European, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, the total, and the number of additional deaths from Chernobyl in the different regions. We get 212,000. Okay, and the problem is, is this is a very, the, so what we need to add additional mortalities that are non-cancerous deaths. So I'm going to continue this in a part two video. Thank you.